everyone, and welcome back to Game 2 of the Grand Finals. You're watching Cloud9 HyperX up against Torch in its best of three series. We're halfway through here. C9 won Game 1. They're looking to close it out early with a 2-0 victory, but Torch, they're going to put up the most fight they possibly can in the history of all Smite. They're looking to win out and push it to Game 3. Let's cover who's playing what and where. They are going for what team? The green grass side, the pristine side, Cloud9, HyperX, your blue team. Zalia in the mid lane with that wonderful UFO Alienware raw. We got Half Devil on Sun Wukong across the way. Sun Touch in the jungle, boasting up that best at Smek on Neath in the jungle as well. Of course, last but not least, we've got Sayo on Odin. So after a first game that wasn't quite in their favor, Torch is going to try to take two straight here versus Cloud9. They're coming in as the fourth seed. We're going to talk about High Rock going to the solo lane again with Chuck. Fun Balls is actually going to be opting against the Hunter and pick up a mage for the duo lane. He's going to be playing Kronos going along with Emilito, the god of wine, playing Bacchus right over to the left side. Spoo going to go to the mid lane once again with Jean Quay. And finally, Shadow Nightmare has gotten himself the god of thunder, Thor. Like we're going to have Fun Ball in the Hunter role with Kronos this time around. And do have a physical jungler and a physical solo. So that does balance out quite well. Shadow Nightmare uses Hog on the Harpy camp. And that's going to slow down his return to the solo lane, surprisingly enough. And Bastet's going to have the opportunity. There's no Hannah Gods available. They leash the movement speed buff. And he jumps right back over. Not only do they have to use their Hannah Gods from High Rock on the movement speed. That means they're going to have to skip this blue if they want to make it to lane in time. Neither of them have that 90-second cooldown back up yet. Walking right by that blue. Zillion Sun Touch pushing it up. Yeah, they might even go for the rush down here. Remember, guys, this week, Hand of the Gods took a pretty big hit. Went from a 60-second cooldown up to a 90-second cooldown at rank 1. So both of them are going to be hurting at least for the next 45. You know, it's strange to see Shadow Nightmare oh my use God. that Hand of the Gods there. Blue buff Sun Touch almost up took there. that by accident. <laughs> That would have been really bad. Stand still. Uh, looks like they didn't, uh, of course, Sun Touch went aggressive there. It means that he didn't get his own bluff, uh, buff, that damage buff there. Uh, but that is available. Fun Ball using that on the left side, using that uh, time rift, time stop combination. Gets some good harassment off. Half Devil coming through as well. Fun Ball dropping low in the mana department. There goes a harassment from the Ryu Jingu Bang, stunning out uh, Emilito with that transformation. Thor's already making his way into the mid lane, looking to put some harassment here on Sayo. But again, it is Odin. Looking for something here, but I mean, honestly, what, what can he really do with this one? I mean, he, at, at level three, he's not going to really have the damage. He doesn't really have the poke, but now he's level four. Um, do you think that Sayo takes the level four point and puts it into Odin's shout for the extra damage, or do you think he saves it for level five to get level three Gungnir's Might? You know, at this point, it may just be the Gungnir's Might, because not only does it allow him to push, and the push is so uh, heavily important in the mid lane, but also allows him to control some of these fights by bursting it down. And, you know, we could try and sit and look to see which one he puts it into. Uh, but at this point, I think he just goes for the Gungnir's Might and skips for now. We'll see if he actually uses the Odin Shout, but that is my intuition. Right side, Raw going to slow down High Rock. The Torrent had already been used. The slow comes down on top. High Rock taking massive damage from the minions. Force back. Hits level 5. There's the Rain Dance. Has Storm Call if he needs it. But level 5 is up on Zayla. Snipe time may be oh. that time right now. Mid camp stolen away. And they're going to get out. They... C9 actually double-handed those mid-camps after they were in kill percent. So uh, Sayo's going to suffer a little bit without his hand of the gods there. Uh, whether it was miscommunication or a misplay on someone's part, it's going to hurt them. Uh, left lane, Emilito hitting level 4. Half Devil still sitting uh, level 3 right now. Actually, just manages to get his well. But Fun Ball is level 5, and he's looking like he's ready to dive. Rewind available. Nice time ripped as well. Uh, going to get some more damage onto Smek. Right lane, High Rock continues to be pushed under his tower, though a lot of his health has returned. Uh, at the three-minute mark, very few buffs are available. In fact, the only camp that's really able to be taken at this point is uh, the small camp on bottom side and the speed buff, which is yet to be taken. That's right. I mean, due to the early harassment from Bastet, as well as her trying to run over to the mid camps and take those out quickly, uh, kind of neglected that movement speed buff early on right side. Divine Light slowing down High Rock, and a little bit of harassment from the Celestial Beam will keep him uh, keep him in a corner for now. I mean, Zalia is very strong with that raw play. And it seems like High Rock in the solo lane not really having as much success with 
uh, that chalk as he did previously with Odin Sayo going the mid lane. Odin honestly may be a bit of a shout out to Torch and just stealing away Odin from them while also going the mid lane. Right side, Zalia, great wall hammer. Neat ult, it might be enough. So let's on the ground. Zalia dropping very low. This could be very close. Does they have enough damage to go? One Thunder Strike will do it. Thor going up in the air. Will he dunk on Zalia or will he try to save himself? He's going to disengage just in time. Of course, Rod not in uh, time to be able to shoot out that snipe to take him down. Mid lane. Emily to Spoon trying to kill Sayo. It's tough though. God, there's the wine right there. He slams the jug down. He's drunkenly just stumbling around, but Half Devil shows up here. Master's Will only going to hit Spoo, who is now out of mana. Emilito doesn't really have a lot there. Lunge level one going to hit for at least 120 right there. Big hits, no kills, but we do see First Blood going down on the right side again for Cloud9. I like that, that, that position there for Sai. I mean, he looked and saw, I'm low. I'm surrounded by 2v1. I mean, you, you know Half Devil's saying, I'm on my way. I'm coming. Don't worry about it. V, 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 E. But at the same time, he looks over and says, okay, wait, Spoo has no mana. He has no harassment, no damage output after this, so I'm going to jump in and use my escape, get some harassment off, and look for something. You saw Half Devil do the best he could to try and move around Spoo to stun out uh, Emilito in that situation, but of course gets body blocked out. That transformation uh, ended up stunning uh, Spoo instead, and it split the damage enough for them to be able to control it. But at this point, C9, first blood, 1,600 gold in their favor, 1,800 experience. USB just got cleared out by uh, Shadow Nightmare in the jungle. Left side, some harassment coming down on Emilito as Half Devil and Emilito go head to head. Fumball zoning out Neath in the meantime. Jingle Bang coming down as well. You know, this left lane seems pretty safe on both ends. Oh, look at this though. Somersault Cloud's going to rain down. Sun Touch inside. Fun Ball's going to be in trouble. He has to rewind. Oh. He doesn't get it in time under the tower right now. Emilito actually goes down to Smek as they try to rush for it. Two kills right there again for Cloud9. And look at this, a free trip to cats. the Gold Fury. The cats are tanking it. No one's even taking damage. Actually, half the devil's taking damage. Drop it low there. Wonder Junk why that happened. In. Exposed Hold evil recall team is gonna get half devil. Can they get the gold fury? It's gonna be really close here. Do they have enough? C9 gets the gold fury and Spoo for free. Four. Thor comes in, Thor hits Sun Touch, he's getting low, but he does manage to get out. He's gonna have a teleport here. He's gonna use it defensively, but he was stunned out, but not for long enough. Shadow Nightmare will be able to get out of that where Cloud9, four to one right now. Wow, Sun Touch escaping just barely there, able to be protected by Odin's spears, and of course Thor not willing to take the risk at the same time. Really worried about the rotation that could come through there, and so Sun Touch going to go back to the jungle, clear out a camp, and go on home here at this point. Heartseeker started up for Sun Touch, going to get some huge damage increase as well as increasing the cats. We saw a free gold theory go to C9, as well as a kill, a big jump, that disjoint graph jump there. You can see already at the 3,500 gold, uh, making a big difference for C9 early on here, 4 to 1. Six and a half minutes into this match, I mean, they're getting a good start yet again. They had a great start last game. They're four to one right now, and they're just they're playing the farm game very, very well. They should be up about 900 to 1,000, but given the way that they've been playing, they're actually up 3,500 drive air. They're really pushing every advantage, and Sun Touch has really taken to this jungle roll today. Level nine already. You see him tie the solo laner. He has three kills playing Bastet again for the second time today on stream. And he's really found his voice with it. Half Devil though, in some trouble here. Gonna be forced up. He does manage to get up. Will they try to turn this around? Fun Balls uh, could be in some trouble here, but he does have rewind available to him. Jumping back down, Half Devil's there just to help clear the wave. Meets with a time rift on the ground as soon as he lands down. Fun ball sending a message here, trying to get aggressive. Uh, does still have rewind if he wants to get out of this one. The Neath ultimate coming down, but of course, no rotations uh, to boot. Mid lane, Sayo pushing Spoo back into corner. Spoo seems to be having a lot of trouble with this John Quay Odin matchup. Sayo scaling so quickly. In fact, they're a thousand gold apart right now. Right side, Pyro gonna go down. Neath ultimate coming out. I like Sun Touch here. He is backing off, zoning it perfectly, knowing that if the torrent teleport comes out, he's going to be able to react to it perfectly. Neath ult coming out, that's guaranteed. Beautiful positioning there, guaranteeing the kill, and they're going to get it. Hydra goes down the right lane yet again, playing as one of his best characters, if not his best character, Chalk. That's right, it's a character uh, that had been banned out a lot, but they're seemingly unafraid. They're allowing him to get it repeatedly. You see the Stone of Gaia Heartseeker has been uh, started up there, and it's really not enough to stop the push coming out from Zalia or the ganks coming out from Sun Touch. I mean, as of right now, you can see he's sitting 
zero two zero has been completely shut down and with 86 gold in hand i don't see that heart seeker getting finished anytime soon sometimes she gets out of dodge there the harassment comes through in the jungle john quay pushing up in the mid lane looking at the damage on the tower but style and half double grouping up it's going to be proving to be too difficult for them right now spook finish off his penetration boost shoes of the magi complete now a lot of wards in the inventory here for c9 in fact three in the inventory for Zalia here, keeping complete vision in the solo lane. And every single time High Rock goes down, he gets a little bit of damage on that tower, and soon that's going to go down here. We're going to see in the jungle, Shadow Nightmare making his way over to the right side lane, trying to harass out on Zalia. Do they have enough? A perfect wall is all they need, but if it's on the wrong side, he'll be able to escape. Good wall protection there. No hold that he had. Storm Call going to land. The silence is going to be there for three seconds. It's about to fall off. There's the Thunderstrike Torrent combination, but Zalia, since it's double physical, Breastplate of Valor is so valuable. You know, 25% cooldown reduction. Oh, mess of mana. I think 550 at max. Uh, yes, it does. Lay. And 75 physical protection. Oh, look at the World Weaver getting blocked by Shadow wow. in the back. And they do manage to take down Sun Touch. That should have been a kill onto High Rock, but a missed World Weaver by kind of the skin of his teeth. I don't know if he meant to do that or if he accidentally did that. Either way, it's going to work out. Torch is going to find his second kill of the game finally trying to make something happen but still 3400 gold separate the two teams sayo here getting greedy go for the speed he's jumping in here he's not afraid at all he's looking for shadow nightmare he's working his way back over towards the speed buff he is not letting this one go the, he's jumping in there he does manage to take it come near spite is up and he's going to be able to do it one shot he's not able to get it he puts down the ring of spears and he starts laying waste how long can thor hold out up there where will he go he's looking to jump back down here there's the lunge the damage on the spoo again Thor actually does manage to retreat here as High Rock rotates over. They're going to find Sayo. Actually, look at the healing come through. He's trying to find a way out of this. How long until it comes up here, I bear? Junk it down. Lunge is going to land on top of a Thunderstrike. Siri Pain comes through, but it's not going to be able to finish off High Rock there in the jungle. Backing off Emily until gets low as well. The support from Zalia was enough to buy time, but Sayo just did not get out. And honestly, you got to know in their uh, voice communication software, they're screaming, get out, get out. We got what we needed, get out. And Sayo going too deep there, being picked off. And honestly, he had the opportunity to literally just walk away because he's so tanky, but gets you know, caught out there. The healing. The speed buff was on the ground, Driver. If he had <laughs> just picked it up, that 10% attack speed might have been what he needed. Zalia, Zalia, Berserker Barrage coming out. Neath ultimate oh might buy us some time. Does he turn around for the kill? It oh kills off Emily, though. Shadow Nightmare has to play this. Shadow Nightmare has to play this perfectly. He's looking for the shot. Shadow Nightmare, Shadow Nightmare doesn't get the hit. Zalia survives, and C9 gets a kill. I... <laughs> you know, it's, it's more than the gold. It's more than the experience. That was about the morale, that they couldn't kill him even in that position. And now Sayo in the mid lane laying waste to Jean Kuei, a character normally extremely tanky. Look what Spoo took there freely. And Fun Ball rotates over, so he's missing experience, allowing Smek to get back to the lane instantaneously. Sun Touch held the lane over on the right side, so nothing was even missed. Cloud9 is at almost 6k in the lead at this point. And Hyrox now, can't even, he can't even contest the blue buff. Zalia's already pushed him back out. This is an incredible level of teamwork that's coming out from C9 today. Oh, absolutely. And they're not only playing well together, not only getting the, the picks that they need, but they're just reading everything that Torch wants to do and just being there before they even do it. Mid lane, a lot of harassment going down. And I think, you know, Shadow Nightmare is behind. He's level 10, his gold is decent, but overall the whole team's behind. And look how easy it is for characters like, you know, Odin, who is pretty tanky at this point, to burst down John Quay. Recall Demon in the mid lane. I think he thought that Sun was going in on that one. Pops it up defensively, but it's not going to do enough. Right side, we see Zalia going hard here on High Rock, forcing him away. Searing Pain may be popped up. And honestly, when you have Shoes of Focus and you have Breastfeed of Valor, you can snipe as many times as you want. That cooldown is so very short. I believe it's 30 seconds uh, capped out on CDR. It's an amazingly short cooldown. And Zalia just going to start shooting these out. Hyderok taking some harassment. He's just throwing basic attacks. <laughs> he is. He's getting a lot of damage done, too. The morale on Torch right now is super low. They're misclicking ults. They're unable to keep towers from getting pushed on. 
and they're constantly too late to the mid camps. It Cloud9 just has control of everything. They need kind of a, a revitalization on Torch. Someone has to reignite the flame to get them out of this darkness. Right now, the World Weaver is going to hit. He was way too right. soon there. Cats are out as well. They take the tower on the right side, Dry Bear. This is just too much. Mid lane being pushed up by Sayo here, looking for blood. Half Devil is there in the support role. Shadow Nightmare, Emily throwing Spoo, looking for defense. Tech Hunter Griff, Hammer comes out. Sayo is undeterred by the damage is minimal. There's the belly flop, and Tosk is available. Trapped inside is Spoo as well as Shadow Nightmare gets a good split on Gunner's Knight. Now coming down to slow is on exposed evil. Shadow Nightmare is going to go on top, but not going to get this done. Unfortunately, Half Devil does get stunned out. Berserk Mars gets the kill. They need to get out of dodge if they want to make this a good win for them. Zalia is here. Look for the snipe. The stun comes down from fun ball damage out is enough and to have forced away here do they have the distance Zalia has the snipe does he look for oh. it Zalia looking for the damage output from bass that's gonna be enough to finish off Thor there goes the gunner's might slow down there's fun ball do they have enough why is Zalia he's actually getting some damage out on top of that now looking for the rewind doesn't get it in time the damage is too much and torch is not finding what they need for, you know, to, to be the god of time, it really doesn't seem like it's on Kronos' side this game. Two times now, we have seen Rewind get completely stuffed. And now 11-4 to four with 8,800 gold to their name. C9 has a demanding lead. And more importantly, map control as 1 minute and 30 seconds dictates the Gold Fury respawn. That's going to allow C9 to control this entire area. Check out half the Getting the ward coverage ready for the push. Right side, Sayo again locks Boo into what might be certain death. Spoo again forced to use recall demons. There is the World Weaver as well, getting a stun off. Sayo's taking some damage, but he jumps over the back and look at the push! Cutting down Shadow Nightmare does not have a teleport out for a few more seconds. He's just trying to get out of there. The pounce is going to be good. Time stop nowhere near it. Sayo will go down, however, but that was a two for one. There's the alien jumped on here. Solar Blessing on the ground. Bastet going for High Rock. The burst damage is real. Sun Touch gets drunk here. Can't handle the alcohol, but tries to get away. Wobbling to and fro. The Searing Pain comes out. Bumball doesn't get the kill there yet. Just yet. The pounce back behind Salia. I love that positioning. Rewind's going to actually counteract it. Bumball looking to kill. Time Rift and Time Stop both miss. And now he is in trouble. Time Rift on the ground. The cat hits home. And the Celestial Beam comes from above and strikes him into dust. As Smek pushes down the left side tower, C9 getting everything they needed there. They got Sayo, but at the same time, look at the itemization here for Torch. Bumball goes for Shoes of Focus into the uh, Breastplate of Valor. His damage is incredibly limited right now. Spoo, again, going for the Breastplate of Valor. Because of the early lead that C9 has, they're forcing defensive items. And look at them grabbing the Gold Fury on cooldown. They were there two seconds before it's bomb ready to go. Searing Pain activated. They're using every ability in the book there to take it down. 12,000 gold. Cloud9 showing game one was not a result of picks and bans. It was result of the players on the team. Half Devil showing up to one of his first tournament matches ever in an amazing fashion right now. 0-2-5, of course, a little bit behind, but the plays he has made are incredible. Don't let the score fool you. But this set, you gotta talk about Sun Touch. The Thanatos won the game last time, and now his best at 8 1 and 2, dodging every point of CC that he can, has really found himself home in the jungle. And the pressure is insane right now. C9 is in their jungle, like you mentioned. The spears come out. Where is he going to go? He's going to try to rewind. Does it actually make it outside the spear? Just barely outside. Of course, not really 100% uh, sure where he's going to rewind to. Stun on Half Devil. Rewind as well. Our cooldown right now. Numbers all caught up in the air. Half Devil looking for a dunk spot. Spoo has already activated recall demons. High Rock bursted by the power that is C9 right now. Expose evil on the ground. This actually could be a decent engagement for Torch if they get out now. And Toxic comes out. And Emilito gets vaporized through the damage. Now coming through Searing Pain. Comes oh. out and John Quay gets sniped. Zalia hit the snipe the again. World. And then the Celestial Beam hits Fun Ball, forcing him down to about 400 HP. Do they have it? Keep in mind, Full City Yar Ra has a 30 second cooldown on that snipe. Salia is going to look for that coming up soon. Celestial Beam on the ground yet again. Bastet wants it. Hits it. Great block by Shadow Nightmare. Forces him to back off there. But the mid tower is down. The damage is done. The Phoenix is exposed. Now, 
jumping in. Bacchus finds all five people with the Intoxicate, but there was no one to follow it up. The celebration ends a little bit too early. Everyone gets a little drunk and still hammers down that brain on Zhang Kui in the mid lane. Now Zalia getting pushed out, trying to get back. Zalia with the snipe again! How does he keep finding these? And that's gonna be it! Cloud9 over Torch! GG! 2-0 victory, 19-5 this time, 24-5 last time. They are absolutely looking so sharp in their play today. Zalia, I mean, I think it just comes down to picking stage. I mean, it. you saw a lot of innovation today from Torch. We saw Kronos in the you know in the long lane playing that hunter role we saw a lot of tanky lineups here uh in the last match and every single time c9 had an answer for it we saw the rotations come out the early kills and you know credit goes to some